All right, well, we got everything cleaned up. It was in pretty good shape to begin with, but now we just got all the, what little bit of stuff was on there out. So we're setting pretty good. All right, the first thing we want to do when putting this back together is drop your firing pin spring back down into the hole here. Okay, so it's front side of the bolt here. Spring drops down in the hole. Careful not to lose it. Yeah. If I can get it to go down in there, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? All right, so firing pin goes down in the hole like such. All right, now, when you go to insert your firing pin back into the carrier, you want to see that you got the hole here in line with the actual hole that the firing pin is going to go in. So make sure that your firing pin, that groove that's on these right here, if I get this to focus, make sure that that groove is up. So it goes in like this. Make sure the groove is facing upward. And then stick it down in there. Okay, now putting pressure on your finger here, you're going to take your pin, which is this guy. Alright, that's the one with the slit down the middle. Like such. Uh, come on, focus. The one with the slit down the middle. You're going to take that and you're going to put it back into here. And if it doesn't want to go in, make sure that you move the firing pin to the point. Making sure that it's up. Alright, so put, so put a little bit of pressure on this. Let me get my rag over here. Put a little bit of pressure on that to get the firing pin back and out of the way. And let that get let that get down into the way. And now that it's in the way, we can put this on the mat here and use the punch. Send it the rest of the way home. And you want to make sure when you're doing that, make sure that it's flush so you can't see anything right there because that pin's all the way down in there. Make sure that that's flush because if you don't, while this thing is trying to ride up and down the receiver, it's going to scratch and make all kinds of heck on you. So make sure that that's flush. You've got plenty of room to play with on this side. So make sure that that's down in there and at least flush if not a little bit inset. All right, now that our firing pin is back where it's supposed to be, inside here, like such. Remember, you got that groove right here. Take this. Slide that into that groove. Again. Groove. Slide it into the groove. Let that sit. All right, so now that's in there, we're going to put the link. Now, remembering that this, this guy right here, sets in like this okay remember that this guy's gonna sit in here like this and this link's got to go underneath this so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the link facing downward so if you like this the link is facing downward and then set it inside there now i'll flip it over you can see what let those holes line up and then take your pin and you shouldn't need a hammer for this this side's pretty loose but line those holes up and then it should just slide right in just like that just hold that in there so now we're going to take that bolt lock you got your bigger spring here that goes down inside this hole in the front right there all right put your spring inside there right there this guy's going to go down making sure that this lock or this link is underneath this bolt catch all right so remember with this you've got a rounded side on one end and a flat side on the other end when you put this in make sure that the flat side of this bolt goes is on the same side it's flat to flat and then how this is kind of rounded here this goes the rounded side goes on this side here so put the rounded side in first because they're coming from the flat side kind of finagle that into place and then it should just slide in like that. Then take your punch and go ahead and send it home. And just like before, you want to make sure that that's flush. That way, as this bolt is riding up and down, 
it is not catching on anything, which it is good. Test it, link's good. All right. All right, now we're ready to get the receiver back out. All right, now that we got the receiver here, we've got two grooves that that bolt carrier is gonna go into, just here on either side of here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your link side first, put it down inside there, and you're gonna match up this groove. The one groove is a little bit longer, so once this side gets started here, you can flip this over. You're gonna see that this other groove doesn't start for a little bit. Line those up to where they're in there. All right, you're gonna get a little bit of tension right here for where this is actually touching the barrel. Uh, just leave that there, let that set for a second. So real quick, before we go too far, what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and take your charging handle. All right, you wanna take your charging handle, and stick it inside here, making sure that it is set up to go into your group the way you want it to and you just sit that in there now i put this back here so that way it kind of holds it in place and then i'll finish pushing this in you can push down on the link if you want to to help give a little bit of pressure out but you're going to have to keep that link up because you don't want it to get caught down here in the back so keeping the link clear pull that back and now you're in place and now you can actually, I'm going to try to get this where you can see it. You can actually line this up with the bolt and it lines up just like so. So that pushes in just like that. So now you got all that back in there and then press your link back into this groove here. And what you can go ahead and do now that you got this set up, if you'll remember the follower, which is right here. This is your follower here that goes inside. You can go ahead and put this follower down inside this tube, send it home, and that'll actually keep that link where it's supposed to be right there. So now there's a little bit of pressure and it keeps it in place. All right, now that we got the bull carrier group in there, I'm gonna go ahead and put the follower down on top of the link like we had it. So the follower is inside, or the link is inside the follower here. Now, normally, uh, this right here, this tube that has a spring inside of it, it's got a threaded side on one end which is attached to here. And this is also threaded on the inside here. And normally this would have the cap, which luckily for us, yay us, is actually stuck down inside here. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see that or not. Oop. Stuck down inside there. I'll try to see if we can make that work for you. It's actually stuck down in there with that bolt. Now I'm not sure what it is that's causing that nut not to let go of that, but regardless, what we're gonna have to do is, we're gonna have to with this one, normally you could take it out of the buttstock and be fine. But in the event that you run into this, basically what I'm gonna do, because the nut is inside here, and it's actually attached to the threads that are on the back side of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed this back into the buttstock here, like so with the in the female side going down inside here like such all right and then what i'm going to do is take a smaller screwdriver and put pressure on that kind of a downward and up angle to get that to hold on to actually tighten this up from the back now again, this is not normal with these. Normally what you would do is uh, put it inside there and then be able to just stick it down inside there and tighten up this screw. But as luck would have it, this one is being difficult. Uh, but hey, that's all right, we can get this through there. But anyway, we're gonna tighten this up just enough to get a couple threads in there. We don't have to go crazy with cheese ribs right now, we just needed to just need to grab on to where it stays by itself. I believe we're there. All right, now that we've got that connected to the stock here, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and take this spring and I'm gonna put it inside this follower here. Now I went ahead and I put this on the gun vise here so that way this isn't moving around when we're trying to do this because I really don't wanna bend this spring, but I really don't have much of a choice because of the fact that this inside here has come loose. 
So we're not going to be doing a major project on this one. We just want to get it cleaned and get it to where Chris can use it. This will be completely functional. It's just that that one piece, when this when we take this apart, that receiver is going to want to shoot off again. So we're going to give that in there, push that in. Like I said, this is not an ideal way of doing this. Being very, very careful not to bend that spring. Push that in there. Let that get in. And that sits down like such. All right, so now we're here. Now comes the fun part. Again, this is not ideal. Not ideal at all. But that's where we're sitting. This is where we're at. Okay. Tighten that up some more so we got some resistance here. All right, so I'm going to push that down to where it's actually touching. And then we're going to come in from the back here. And we're going to tighten this up. Uh, because those two pieces are together, we should doing this blind because I'm having to keep tension on here. So having to do this all by feel right now. And again, like I said, this is not ideal, but it will get this shotgun back together. So you can already see that it's it took no time biting down on top of that. Uh, I can actually let go. They're actually it's together now. So basically, I just want to keep pulling the stock in and tighten this all the way down. So I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. All right, now that we got that stock back on there, now we're going to be dealing with the trigger assembly. And the trigger assembly, just like before, basically just sits down inside here like such. All right, once that's in there, take your pins, push them through. Once you make sure you're lined up. Don't want to mar that up, so I'm going to grab another punch. Make sure that's flush. And it's flush. All right. Keep moving on. All right, so now we've pretty much got everything on the lower part done. I went ahead and charged this back to get it out of the way. So basically, we're going to take our spring here slide a spring over your tube then you got your your governor here now remember there's a beveled side and then there's a flat side the flat side up is for low brass beveled side up is for high brass and chris was having problems with it feeding or not as filling to feed failure to cycle which was causing it to uh well it's causing out the cycle so what we're going to do is we're actually going to put the flat side up so that way when Chris shoots it shouldn't cause me problems. Get that down. Alright. Then we've got our rings here. Go down top. Line that up properly. Set it down. Get that in place. Like so. Now, put this to the side for just a half a second, and then what we'll do is I'm actually going to take the barrel and the forearm and slide the barrel with the hoop in into the forearm and slide it all the way forward. Then I'm going to take this, slide it into the forearm like such. And that sits down like such. Alright, now when you're pulling this down, just like with your bolt, these grooves right here go into the same grooves that are inside the gun itself here and on this side. So when you push this down, 
you got to make sure that they line up like they're supposed to inside those grooves all the way down all right and the reason i put the forearm and the barrel together like that first was because the this has actually got a lot of tension now because that springs underneath here underneath this forearm there's actually a lot of tension i've got to press it against my leg right now so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and put this on the bench actually right, so i can do this right here where you can see it and grab the cap so we've got tension on it grab that cap don't try to cross thread these things here and that sets right like that so send that home don't just check all the way back all right she works just like she's supposed to so let's go ahead and take this out i've got a bunch of the low brass we'll take it out and try it all right we're actually going to forego going outside right now and shooting this because i forgot we need to put this uh butt stock pad recoil pad on the shotgun itself i'd really rather not shoot the shotgun regardless of what brass load it is on a straight wooden stock that was not gonna feel good so I'm gonna figure this out first. We'll get that on the shotgun and then we'll take it out and test it. All right, so what we did here, I took the pad and we had, this is the original screw here. I was able to find me another screw here that would work for this. And then I came in behind it, drilled a hole through the pad itself into the plastic piece here. Now with this, if you're gonna do this, you gotta make sure that the screw has a flat end on one side. That way, once it gets to this actual plastic piece in here, that it just spins. So that way it spins and it can come out of the buttstock like it's supposed to. So let's see if it fits. Alright, as luck has it, we need to open it up just a little more. Alright. She's a little stiff. But she works. All right, so there we have it. I completely deassembled and reassembled with a little bit of extra on the back here. Uh, 48 AL. So everything looks good. She feels good. Functions check works. All right, so now we're gonna run outside real quick. I got a couple low brass here. And I wanna see if we can cycle this low brass. Uh, cause that was the issue that he was having with it. So let's put three or four rounds down range. All right. So what we've got now is I've got three rounds of Winchester, just generic load, seven and a half shot. Uh, I think it's one and one eighth. It's the lowest velocity I could find, which is 1200 feet per second. So this is the smallest brass that I could find. So let's see if we can pop off three rounds and see if she'll see if she'll jam up for us but i'm pretty sure we got that thing licked the fact that we flipped that governor the way we did i bet you she runs like a dream oh yeah lock back and everything good deal all right well i could not have been happier with that that worked out fantastic disassembly went well didn't have any problems the gun was actually in pretty good shape so kudos to chris and his family for keeping the gun in good shape uh chris was just worried with the fact that the recoil pad uh being what it was he wasn't sure how long it had been since it had been clean but whoever had this last put it away dry put it away clean and it is in fantastic shape so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it helps you guys deassemble and reassemble your uh, 48 ALs. So from Suburban Hunt 365, my name is DJ. Do us a favor, hit that like, hit that subscribe, 
We need you guys to be subscribers with us. Hang out with us. We'll always bring you as much as we can. We give you all we got. To God be the glory. Thank you for everything he's given us. Again, this is DJ's Broken Home 365. Out.